I can't think of a better person to explain the significance of the next award than the grandson of the esteemed Darl Anderson. Please welcome to the stage Jeff Anderson. Thank you, Pat. Dear friends, to borrow one of my grandfather's favorite words, I'm tickled to be here with you tonight and to represent my family in sharing with you a little bit about someone who we love, my grandfather, Darl Anderson. For those of you who did not know my grandfather, he was passionate about what he believed in and he was not shy about sharing his beliefs. He spent several decades of his life meeting with civic and religious leaders to try to build a common bond, to try to build bridges of understanding. And I think that during this process, he realized that there was one principle that we all have in common, and that is the golden rule. He decided to make that his mantra and tell that to the, to the whole world. In 1997, I was living in a small town called Bogalusa, Louisiana, while serving a full-time mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. One morning, I was awakened by a phone call. I picked up the phone and I heard my father's voice. This was very surprising because missionaries only get to talk to their parents on Mother's Day and Christmas. And so when I heard my father's voice, I knew that it probably wasn't good news. He briefly told me that my grandmother had passed away. And that came as a shock because I didn't know that she was sick at all. So it was a very big surprise. As I hung up the phone with him and I was trying to process what just happened, my thoughts turned to my grandfather Anderson and wondered what he was thinking. Um, what would his life be like without her? How could he continue to be happy and feel like he still had purpose? A few months later, my parents sent me a photo of a recent family trip that my grandfather took with his children and lots of his grandchildren. In this photo, which they will show up in just a second, you can see the entire group wearing brightly colored t-shirts that have written on the front in big bold letters, the golden rule is the way to happiness. Grandpa was standing in the in the right front of this photo, or, or the right back. He also had a hat and had one of his patented bumper stickers right across the front. Golden rule is the way to happiness, just in case someone didn't notice the big bold letters on the front of his shirt. As I looked at this photo, I realized that Grandpa may have lost his first love for a short time, but he still had his second love, sharing the message of the golden rule. If you didn't know my grandfather personally, this was his mission. He wanted to share this message with everyone and worked for the rest of his life to make that happen. He loved the interfaith movement and his main goal was to bring people together. In conclusion, I would like to share with you some words from a children's book that my cousin Sherilyn Knudsen wrote in 2005 to honor my grandfather. The book teaches children what the golden rule is and how it applies in their lives. The, at the very end, she concludes with a phrase that we grandchildren have heard preached many times from my grandpa's mouth. She says, quote, following the golden rule means I love you. Love makes us happy and being happy is the smart way to be. I know just as grandpa did that if we choose to apply the principles 
of the golden rule in our own lives, we too will be happy. Thank you. Jeff Anderson. The Darl Anderson Award goes to a friend of yours and mine and the community across so many different categories of business and humanitarian work. I first met Jimmy Walker in his office when he called me and said, hey, you want to come over and meet Bobby Riggs? You want to come over and meet Bobby Riggs, one of the tennis greats of all time. But these were the folks that were just buddies of Jimmy Walker for his deeply caring and philanthropic service to others and the many dynamic ways he's impacted thousands of people, including youth. Our final honoree has been, I know you'll agree, a shining example of living the golden rule, not only in Arizona, but nationally and internationally. Find out more right now about Mr. Celebrity Fight Night, Jimmy Walker. Who is the real Jimmy Walker? Most days, he is Jimmy the businessman, president of Jimmy Walker Limited, an estate planning and compensation firm. On other special days, you might see him walking among the stars, stars like Halle Berry, the champ, Reba McIntyre, Jennifer Lopez, Robert De Niro, or Miley Cyrus, to name a few, as he superintends Celebrity Fight Night. For sure, every Monday morning, Jimmy will be at the largest St. Vincent de Paul dining room greeting the homeless, bringing in famous guest speakers, and delivering a supportive message to over 500 of them to never give up. When we first started the program, we had three people who came the very first day. One person was in the room sleeping, one was there for the coffee, and one was to hear Jimmy speak. And I thought, this is never going to last. And Jimmy said, no, Steve, we can never give up, we can never give up. The next week we had five people, then we had 10 people, then we had 15 people. Now we have four and 500 people every single week who come to St. Vincent de Paul to listen to Jimmy's message of faith and hope. And on every Tuesday morning, you will find Jimmy at a local restaurant leading a Bible study where one attender considers it one of the greatest blessings of her life. His messages really hit home. He has, a, he has pretty powerful messages that you can tell he put a lot of thought into. And I've enjoyed the experience. I'll come back again and again. Throughout the years, Jimmy has helped various Valley charities raise money. But one of Jimmy's favorites is Bicycles for Kids. During the last 31 years, Bicycles for Kids has provided approximately 6,000 bicycles for inner city children. Jimmy's journey began here in Phoenix several years ago, as told here by a couple of his boyhood friends. I remember we'd go over to his house in, in the backyard and play basketball on their court. And remember I was there and I ended up breaking my foot. Remember that? Yes, we were in, playing in Jimmy's backyard. His yeah. Dad had that full court. Yeah. basketball court right in the back. There was a guest house back there in the full court. I remember I was having trouble playing and Jimmy kept coming over. Oh, Gene, that it'll just work it out. It's nothing. You'll be just fine. Remember, don't, still to this day, I wouldn't take any medical advice from Jimmy. <laughs> I, I agree with you. I, one of the other things that happened at that, there was a little guest house in the back uh, by the uh, court. And one weekend, one night, some of us, I think we were fourth or fifth grade, spend the night. Those were in the days of dial telephone and you had to go through the operator. Jimmy had gotten a hold of Mickey Mantle's home phone number in Texas. And so he dials it up, gets the operator, want to talk to Mickey Mantle in some place in Texas and Mickey's wife answers the phone. And she, t uh, operator tells her that got a collect call from Jimmy Walker, Phoenix, Arizona, and wants to talk to Mickey Mantle. And she announces that Mickey's not there, but uh, he does not take collect phone calls. So Jimmy kind of spoke over the operator and kind of write to his wife telling her or asking her, please tell Mickey that Jimmy Walker called and hung up. When I am down 
And oh, my soul so weary when troubles come. You know, my dear friend Jimmy Walker has been uh, a real pillar in our community in terms of the philanthropic uh, efforts he's put forward to, with in particular uh, the Fight Night event each year. It's one of the most successful fundraisers in the country, not just here in Arizona. It's received all kinds of prestigious awards and it's just an amazing accomplishment. I'm very proud of what he's accomplished because uh, so much has gone to help so many uh, in our community. We were very fortunate to have him to be a friend and I think uh, the Valley of the Sun in Phoenix has been uh, very lucky to have him as a resident and uh, a, a real asset to the community. Jimmy is a bridge between this life and the next life for so many people, those who are very fortunate and the least of those, uh, the people who come down to St. Vincent de Paul and who eat in our dining room. And it's marvelous to be around Jimmy. You see a man who's so filled with faith and great love for everyone in our community. If anybody ever used and applied the golden rule, wouldn't you say Jimmy's one of those? I mean, he, he, def he always, definitely is. He was always helping our community. If anybody d deserves this, the award that he's about to receive, I, th is. I think they made a great choice this year. I agree. I think the scripture where it says, to much is given, much is expected, is really something I try to live up to. Jimmy, congratulations on this honor. I can't think of anyone who's more deserving than you. Enjoy your night. Well, I'm very humbled and, and thankful. It's a privilege to receive an award from such an outstanding man who lived by such an example of the golden rule. And the fact that there's many people of different faith, I'm a Christian, one of the things I know that's very important is that we're to respect one another, even though we have our differences. And it goes back to the book of Exodus when Moses said in the Ten Commandments, we're to love our neighbors. And if we could certainly do this, and have more understanding and respect. We may not always agree with someone's doctrine or their philosophy, but it's all about love. It's the fact that we're to love our neighbors. And uh, so I'm sure that uh, Darrell Anderson, I sure wish I would have met him, but he, he left a legacy that uh, all of us need to follow. So I'm looking forward to uh, joining, you know, all the friends and the people who've supported this wonderful event that's in Mesa. And again, I don't necessarily think I'm qualified for this award, but I will certainly try to live up to it. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on With the many hats seas. Jimmy wears, it's sometimes difficult to really determine who the real Jimmy is. But tonight, we know him as the Darrell Anderson Golden Rule Awardee of 2015. He brings the stars every year. Now we get to bring a star in his own right to the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, the Darrell Anderson Award winner, Jimmy Walker. I'm sure you're wondering, what did I pay all those people to say all those things about me? I can tell you this, they far overestimated me. Because after you've heard that, everything about me, it's going to be downhill. Your estimation of me, I'm confident. But I thought of the other honorees after listening to you. You deserve this award equal to me. I mean, what I received from what you're doing and how God's using you, it's really the key. And... I will say this, first of all, you can't get a better MC than Pat McMahon. You are the best, really. But I thought you were going to play Bobby Riggs in that tennis match. You know, he wanted to get into your wallet, right? But uh, before I make any other statements or any comments, I want to say this, that the greatest decision I made long ago, 47 years ago, when I convinced 
a girl named Nancy to be my wife, and I would not be standing here without the influence and her love for me. And Nancy, would you stand, please? And by the way, Pat, I said about a couple months ago, I introduced Nancy, and I had to make this statement. I said, Nancy, if you ever leave me, I'm going with you. So not a lot of options for the young lady, right? But anyway, it is very humbling to receive this award. When I think of Daro Anderson, I didn't have the privilege of knowing him and meeting him. And Jeff, you had a phenomenal grandfather who, yes, lived by example. And when I knew how much he loved God, and when I knew whether it was race, religion, or education, or financial status, it didn't make any difference. Because it was about the person. It was about the individual. And perhaps, Jeff, when I think of your grandfather, if there were a scripture or two that would best describe him, where it says, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works, which will glorify your Father in heaven. Or maybe I could refer to Daro Anderson as well done, good and faithful servant, because he really served as a role model and his legacy was that of love. And when I think of a good friend of mine who's a Muslim, by the way, have you ever heard of Muhammad Ali? Well, Muhammad Ali is an amazing man, and uh, he and I have talked a lot about religion. And Muhammad Ali says this, the greatest religion in the world is a religion of love. And it makes me think about Moses in the Old Testament, the book of Exodus, when he said that we're to love thy God above any other love and love thy neighbor. And I know that when I was younger and reading the Bible for the first time, my mentor was a man named Larry Wright. Did anybody in this room know Larry Wright? Raise your hand if you knew Larry Wright. Well, Larry Wright is now, and Pat, I know he was a good friend of yours. He used to be a disc jockey, as good as you practically. And, uh, but Larry said this about faith. He was my mentor. He said about faith, there's two parts. There's love and there's doctrine. But he said regarding doctrine, we're not always going to agree. If we sat down with the person next to us, we're not always going to agree with what they think in their faith or their doctrine. However, as Dr. Paul said, we are to be respectful for one another in our differences. And when it comes to love, among faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these gifts is love. Love is patient and kind. It's not arrogant or rude. It's not irritable. It's not jealous or boastful. Love is so strong that it doesn't even see the fault in other people. Love should be our greatest aim. And I think of the book of Galatians where it talks about what all of us should be, regardless of our beliefs and our doctrine, where our life should show love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, meekness, and humility. And I know you saw a little bit about Celebrity Fight Night. You may have read a little bit about it this week. And uh, while well, I won't go into detail or into depth about the comp comp uh, compensation studies, that were all approved, let me just say this. Celebrity Fight Night that's raised a lot of money for good charities, it is not about Jimmy Walker. It is about the Muhammad Ali Parkinson Center. All the men and women, so many cannot afford to get treatment. So many of them have tremors. So many of them can hardly walk and can hardly talk. But through a lot of generous people and the help of the champ, we have raised a lot of money. And I just heard the other day, I got a very encouraging letter from someone, I didn't even know him, but they heard through Celebrity Fight Night about Barrels and the neurosurgeon, and their son was about to die, and we got him in to get surgery, and he said, through Celebrity Fight Night, the life was saved. And thank you, Barrels, for the great neurosurgeons there. And then finally, thank you, Steve Zabilski, Executive Director, and Jerry Castro at, at St. Vincent de Paul, we do have a program that's in its seventh year every Monday morning. It's called Never Give Up. And we are there to encourage five, 600 homeless people, many men, women, wonderful people living on the streets on park benches. And they all have potential. And our attitude is if we can help change one life, it's worth it. But I'll just finish by saying this. Faith comes from hearing, hearing the word of God. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. 
And faith is really knowing that God is working out our perfect plan in our life. And I know there's a lot of hurt, suffering, hurt, depression, discouragement. There's a lot of dysfunctional families in the room. But you can't give up on faith because as Joshua said in the Old Testament, God never fails. So faith is knowing that God is working out your plan in your life. And faith doesn't always make everything easy, but it does make all things possible. I think of Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra said this, live every day like it's your last day because one day it will be. <laughs> and so I think in terms of, I want to live the abundant life. I want to live a life with victory. I get kidded, Pat, I get up so early in the morning and they say, why do you get up so early in the morning? And I just, my answer is because I don't want to miss out on anything. But I mean, to live the abundant life, to have that victory. And Jeff, what you said about your grandfather, about happiness, and I love to share it to the homeless. If you really want to be happy, find a way to make other people happy. Isn't that what the golden rule is all about? Regardless of your doctrine and whatever you believe. So, yes, I want to live the abundant life. I know you do. And I want to live it by faith. And let's all of us live the golden rule. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dr. Paul.